So that, that revenue forecast is really what caught people by surprise in a good way, despite the food inflation and the, the staff shortages. What, what is driving the better growth that you're seeing? Well, you know, we've had this strong, consistent, slow recovery through COVID, and it really peaked in the Q4. And, you know, anybody who's been around New York and uh, doing things in fourth quarter, things just were starting to move again, right? October, November, December, early December felt great. We beat sales by last year by over 30%, comped over 21%. Uh, and even our, our comps versus 2019 were up for the first time since the pandemic. So the team has been working incredibly hard. And it was really just a strong uh, look at what Shake Shack looks like as things began to return to normal. Now, here we are a few weeks in. It's been a lot tougher those last few weeks, but it'll be cyclical. We'll get, we'll come out of this COVID moment as well. Uh, but it's been a tough start to the year. Um, really proud of the team for how they ended last year, though. Well, it's tough. You mentioned in the presentation around staffing issues. So, so talk to us about exactly what's going on because Omicron is still surging. Hopefully, it's peaked in New York, but still very high levels. So, so what is that like? And and it's not just New York across the country as you build out these new stores. Yeah, we sure hope it's peaked in New York and, and hopefully everywhere soon. That's that's our belief and our hope. Um, look, staffing's been hard. It's been hard through COVID. It's been exceptionally hard last year. And in this moment, it's tougher than ever. And if there's one message I could give to this audience and anyone else, next time you're at a shack or any place where a person is serving you, give them a sincere thank you. Um, it matters right now. Our teams are working harder than ever. Look, we, we were really able to start to begin to get staffed up again in the fourth quarter. In this last few weeks, like you've seen from whether it's an airline or other restaurants, we've been impacted too. We've had to shorten some hours at some shacks from time to time. We've had to uh, have various closures on and off. But our team is working so hard. We will get through it. And we fully expect, you know, this is part of Shake Shack. This is our culture. We take care of each other. We expect we'll get on the other end of this, I hope, soon, and get back to taking care of people with, with normal hours. But even through this, the um, team's been faring incredibly well for the challenges they have. Randy, in terms of uh, delivery, what's the balance of orders you get through your own website and app versus uh, other companies' apps? And, and what's the margin difference? I, I mean, on one level... Fewer, fewer fees to pay to, to the rival, but uh, also you have to take the delivery cost on yourself. Yeah, well, for, we, we love doing it on all channels. We're, we're happy to participate in the great third parties. We have a fantastic relation with them. And we also prefer the order on the Shack app. You know, part of this whole work has been the digital transformation that Shack has undergone in the various formats. We just make it so much easier for you now to pre-order, pick up your food. And, you know, one of the exciting things we did this quarter for the first time ever, we launched and opened our first ever Shake Shack drive through one in Minnesota and one in Lee's Summit in Missouri. Uh, and this has been a game changer for us. We're going to open up to 10 of those this year, and we're continuing to drive the different formats. And the digital frequency, you know, the Shack guest now is truly an omnichannel guest. We know that when we get people in our omnichannel infrastructure, they generally tend to come more often, spend more, and are more dedicated to the brand. So you're seeing some images there of our, uh, our great drive through opening, and it has been super exciting for us to see that happen. Seems pretty COVID friendly as well, Randy. That, that unit growth of opening new stores and developing new footprints is key for your stock and your growth story. Has that been held back at all by COVID as you look ahead to, to what 2022 brings? Not really. We met our guidance for this year. We opened 36 domestic company operated shacks and 26 internationally. So you look at that, 62 restaurants um, on top of, that was more than 20% unit growth. There's not a lot of companies in our category doing that. We're doing it in China, in Korea, in various cities in Mexico. Uh, we're still growing in the Middle East and, of course, here in the United States. Uh, and that business, both our license and our domestic company operated business, has really continued to come back. This year, we've noted that we expect to accelerate development and have our largest class of shacks ever from 45 to 50 here in this country and 20 to 25 in the various great uh, partnerships we have outside of the U.S. So this will be our biggest growth year ever. And, you know, when you really think about us compared to uh, some of the other giants that you bring on here, we're actually still pretty small in the, in the realm of things. And we just still feel like we're just getting started in all these new formats and all this digital transformation just gives us such an exciting runway. And I think that's what, that's what people have always known and, and bet on for Shake Shack.